more than just a house, Talita Kumi is a home that brings hope and healing to children, changing their lives. We are hosting our second annual Talita Kumi House of Safety Golf Day in Bloemfontein on Friday, the 5th of August, 2022. This is to raise funds for the care of our children and for the completion of the current building project, which includes five homes set to establish our children's village. Each house will become a home for eight beautiful children, changing their lives forever. If you would like to be a part of this, find out more on our website at crcchurch.com. CRC Bible School, we offer eight-week courses that equip you with biblical principles and practical understanding for every area of your life. Visit our website today at crcchurch.com to find out how you can be a part of Term 3 starting on the 26th of July. Who says having a fun holiday should mean losing your testimony? Remember December provides Christian youth with a safe and fun holiday where they can relax, have fun, make memories, and still be the hands and feet of Jesus. Remember December will take place at the Wilderness Hotel from the 2nd to the 11th of December, 2022. So, if you are in matric or a student, what are you waiting for? Sign up for the adventure of a lifetime. Not only will we have incredible activities each day, we will get to reach out to the lost and broken in Plettenberg Bay. Fulfilling the call to win the lost at any cost. This is a holiday you will never forget. Visit our website now at crcchurch.com. for yourself and for your children and for your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren because your vision keeps you alive. Not sitting and sucking your thumb in a corner somewhere. 
When Moses went to deliver Israel, God asked him, what is in your hand? When David went to defeat Goliath, God asked him, what is in your hand? You've got to get busy, Jack Jones. You've got to get busy. You've got to get up, Job, off the ground and stop complaining and murmuring and worship up. I will bless the Lord at all times. Good morning, church. Make a joyful noise and give Jesus praise. Whenever I think about you, whenever my heart is set on you, my feet turn to dancing Cause you are good With everything inside me And every breath you gave me Lord, I'll sing out your praises Cause you are good Hallelujah We sing out for your glory Our hearts cry out Open heaven In this place overflowing Cause you are good You are good, Jesus. You are good. I lift my eyes towards you, lay my life before you with no hesitation. Cause you are good, hallelujah. We sing out for your glory. Our hearts cry out, open heaven, in this place overflowing, cause you are good, Ooh, you are good, you are good, Jesus you are good, hallelujah. Sing out for your glory Our hearts cry out Open heaven In this place overflowing Cause you are God Nothing can stop my praise Whatever comes Whatever comes my way My hope is in your name God, you will never change All 
up your scars Oh yeah Come back to communion Come back to the start Oh we're running Run into wide open spaces Graces Waiting for you Dance like the weight has been lifted Graces Waiting Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. Oh, the Spirit is here, let there be freedom. Shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus, the whole, shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus, the whole, this morning this morning if you need prayer for anything there are pastors and leaders waiting online to meet with you to pray with you we serve the faithful God so if that is you please connect with us as we continue to worship in Jesus name Whoa, more than silver more than gold more than anything these hands could hold more than every treasure I desire Jesus the lover of my soul I desire Jesus the lover of my soul I give you my heart you are worth it all you are Desire Jesus, the lover of my soul. I desire Jesus, the lover of my soul.
Cause I don't have Jesus I don't have anything Give me Jesus Give me Jesus You can have all this world I just want Jesus I count everything as nothing If I don't have Jesus Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. 
Come on, you can give God the biggest praise all over South Africa because that name is above every other name. Come on, say amen. We find hope, we find help, we find healing, we find restoration in the presence of God today. And I'll tell you something, that name is still above every other name, every giant that we face in this world. The Bible says, for the Lord God has given him the name that is above every other name, that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in the heaven, things on the earth and things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Come on this morning. Somebody just say, Jesus is Lord. Say it. Welcome TBN, TBN, yet to One Gospel. All our viewers, hundreds of thousands with us this morning. Praise TV, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, CRC Online. Radio stations, correctional facilities, people in countries all over the world and all our CRC churches. We welcome you with us today in the name of Jesus. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. In Jesus' name. Welcome to Bloomfield, Bloomfield North, Lady Brand, Cape Town, Cape Town North, Jeffreys Bay, Clark's Dort, Battle, Peter Marisburg, Port Elizabeth, Botch of Struam, Vintook and Uppington. We welcome you with us this morning and then Pastor Chris and Brenda with us to um, Generals in God's Kingdom. We are blessed to have you with us and um, leading IFCC as well. You may take your place in heavenly places this morning and please unbuckle your seatbelt because I have a message that will challenge you to go to greater heights than you've ever gone before. And the title of my message, are you a camper, a climber, or a quitter? <laughs> a lot of reasons to quit. 
in your personal life in South Africa, but we are not those who quit. I often think about this with almost 8 billion people alive in, on planet Earth, why there are so few people that even attempt to scale the mountain peaks, not only geographically, but of life. I'm sure everybody that is born starts with a dream. Every young person has high aspirations to do something great with their lives. I don't think there's a person that is born that does not have the desire to progress and get on with life. And I'm reminded as I look at my five grandchildren, okay? Thank God for COVID in that sense. My kids got busy. And um, every time I see them, there's progress. Now, I understand when we go through some municipalities, etc., there's regress, and, and we're not going to talk about that. We are going to talk about progressing. And yes, the reality. After being a pastor for almost 35 years, I've learned that many people start the journey with faith and vision in God. That things happen. They begin to climb that mountain that God called them to climb. Their destiny, their purpose, and then for some reason... They camp or they quit. I want to tell you that the person that quits and camps do not get the reward. And sitting here today, each and every one of us are facing a battle. It may not necessarily be a battle of the enemy, but it may be a battle because you have chosen to progress, that you're not a settler, you're not a happy camper. Come on. You're not somebody that is going to stay in the same place. You are a mover and you are a shaker and you believe that your best days are ahead of you. You are still like Caleb at 85. You are not ready to retire. You are ready to refire. Oh, come on, somebody over the age of 50. Jump to your feet and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. So I'm going to try in this new series that I start today to answer the questions, why so many people camp? And I, if you're taking notes, you almost have to write camping comfort. It's nice in the camp. No challenge in the camp. Base camp before you summit Mount Everest. It's been a journey, but now it's easy to camp. And watch other people progress and summit the mountain. While you are alive, this journey of life will be a challenging journey. And while you are alive, you are going to face giants, adversity, opposition in your personal life and also as a nation. It's gone. So let's talk about um, why people camp and why people quit. Because it's the easy thing to do, right? Quitting on a destiny, quitting on a degree, quitting on a decision you made a year ago. Quitters just don't get the reward. Tonight I'm talking about if you want the crown, you have to climb. <laughs> and if you're not climbing... You ain't going anywhere. And climbing is never the path of least resistance. It's always filled with obstacles, challenges, giants, thorns, thistles, whatever you want to call it. That's why there are so few people that you will find climbing after 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. Some way people just have enough or some way people think, uh, the challenge I face is too big or I'm the only one or I'm too young, I'm too old. Hey, may I remind you this morning that one believer and God make a majority. So if God called you to do something, you are going to do it. You are equipped. Come on, say amen and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. So let's look at one of my favorite portions in the Bible because the Bible says this is here for us to learn. Why Israel never possessed the land of promise that God had for them? Remember, there's the, there's the promise, then there's the process. 
There's the dream, then there's the journey, Joseph. And it's never easy. You want to end in the palace, you must be willing to go through the prison. You have to be willing to go through the pit. Amen. So I don't care where you are, I do care, but I mean it doesn't matter. I should rephrase that. I'm Afrikaans doing my best preaching English. Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'll someone do a reggae song for you there. It doesn't matter. Uh, 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 uh. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Where you are now. It doesn't matter where we are as South Africa. We're not where we want to be, but thank God we're not where we used to be. And some things may be worse, but other things are better. Can you say amen in Jesus' name? So I think you are still here because you believe in a great future. So we have to talk about our attitude, our aptitude, our determination, and how we will change things in our personal lives and also in this country that we love. So let's look at the story in the Bible. One of the greatest lessons we can learn, Numbers chapter 13 verse 17. The Bible says, Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, land of milk and honey, South Africa, one of the wealthiest countries in the world, and said to them, go up this way into the south and go up into the mountains and see what the land is like. Whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad. Is South Africa a good land or a bad land? Shout it out. One, two, three. No, some of you are just going, ah, no. Do you see a future in South Africa? No, say a louder amen, okay? I know Namibia, other countries. Come on, let's give God a praise because we know South Africa is a land of milk and honey for us. He says, see the land. What it is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, productive or lazy. <laughs> okay, I added in there. Corrupt or incorrupt. <laughs> okay, let me behave. Whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor. Or whether they are forest there or not, be of good courage. Now remember, courage is the inherent ability to suppress fear and the disturbing consequences thereof. We don't focus on giants. We don't talk like everybody else. We don't become negative. We don't become naysayers. We don't become part of the camping crowd. We don't become part of the quitters club because you're not going to find them because they've quit the quitters club as well, okay? We don't quit. Say, I'm not a quitter. No, come on, say it. Say, I'm not a quitter. Say, I'm not a quitter. Say, sometimes, say it. Say, sometimes I feel like quitting, but I will not quit. Say, I will not quit. Say, I'm not a quitter. Say, I'm not a quitter. Say, my future is a sure thing. My future is a done deal. But God says to me, say it, say God says to me, I have to be strong and I have to be full of courage. Say it today, say I am strong, say I am courageous, say it again, say I am not a quitter. In Jesus name, Amen. Hallelujah. It says be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. Verse 26, now they departed and came back to Moses after watching the news and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh and they brought back word what comes out of your mouth will determine the level of your courage you empower your life with your words for failure or success so they brought back word. They said, I'm not able. I'm not capable. I don't have what it takes. I'm alone. 
and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land, the gold, the diamonds, the silver, the possible agriculture, possible great cities with great service delivery. Hallelujah. Possible great utility providing electricity company in its former glory as it was in 2001 when it was the greatest or voted the number one utility company in the world. So I don't care how people have messed up our dream. We don't give up on our dream. We keep our faith in God and we believe that God will put people in the right place to change things for the better of the people of South Africa. Amen. So he said, we went to the land where you sent it. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is his fruit. Nevertheless, shorten word for nevertheless is but. Mar. Your but will get you on your butt. Your but will get you to quit. You find a reason to fail, you will fail. You find a reason to settle, you will find that reason. You have a conversation with the wrong person, they will steal your dream. Sometimes people steal our dreams emotionally, sentimentally. These people come back and they see the land, the opportunity that God gives them. But now they're overwhelmed by the giants that are in the land. And we'll see this for a moment. And rather than being movers, rather than walking with God, facing the obstacle and the adversity, they chose to quit. Ten people chose to quit. How many things has God for you? How many promises has God given you? How many journeys have you begun? And now you're facing maybe the challenge of your life and everything in you says, quit. Well, I want to say to you, don't quit. You get up, my brother. You get up, my sister. You be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. You don't, you get that quit out of you. Come on, say amen in Jesus' name. You get the quit out of you in Jesus' name. You get the quit out of you in the name of Jesus Christ. You move into the land that God has for you. You stay true to the course. You climb the mountain. So you can taste the victory that God has for you. Everybody that climbs Mount Everest, I'll tell you, I never, uh, don't even think I'll attempt it, has had thoughts of quitting because you have pain, you have adversity. Some of us older guys that went through leadership in the military, we did what we called fussbait. And they called it fussbait, but Van Jim would fussbait. If you want the pups, if you want the crown, if you want the victory, you have to go past and beyond the threshold of comfort, discouragement, pain, adversity, the voices of everybody else around you that are part of the quitters club, those that want you to camp, you have to make up your mind. I'm not a happy camper. I'm happy but I'm not a camper. I'm going to follow Jesus into the deep unknown. I'm going to follow Jesus into the adventure of my life. I'm going to face my mountain. I'm going to face my giant. I'm going to face my Goliath. I'm going to conquer my obstacles in Jesus' name. I'm not going to allow the voices of discouragement and the voices of low self-esteem and the voices of inferiority to derail me from what God called me to do. I am going to talk myself into the victory. I am a winner. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If God meant it for me, it shall be for the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. And, 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 and may I say this, we don't choose the mountain God calls us to scale. God gives us the mountain. And oftentimes it's not the mountain you, should have, you would have chosen because the mountain you would have chosen is the easy way. And God knows the easy way will not purify you, refine you, and build you into the man and woman that God called you to be. Say amen, somebody in Jesus' name. So they say it's a great land, nevertheless, there, but the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified, very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites dwell in the mountains. The Canaanites dwell by the sea and the strong bands of the Jordan. And the Eskimonites 
and the Corruptionites and the GBV Knights dwell in South Africa. And the lack of service delivery lights and the load shedding lights. Nights, shouldn't be lights, nights. Load shedding nights. Dwell in the land of South Africa. Hey, but it's a good land. It's a great land. It's a land of milk and honey. That's where we are going to possess our future for the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So Caleb quieted the people before Moses and he said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able. Somebody say, I am well able. Say it. Listen, this is the word of God for you this morning. You're facing a challenge. There's quitting you. Many of you are thinking about quitting something. You're thinking about quitting a journey. You're thinking about quitting what God has called you to do. You have to get the quit out of you today. Because after the service, somebody's going to have a conversation with you again to get you to quit again. This morning, you have to make up your mind. I don't care whether you are 12 or whether you are 20 or whether you are 200 years old. You have to make up your mind. I am not over. I'm not done. I have places to go. I have things to do. I'm not a quitter. I'm not going to find a reason to be a, 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 a camper. I'm not going to go retire in Stolby. I'm going to go to Stolby and turn it into love. Bye-bye in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on in Jesus' name. Don't get the, don't allow the quit to come on the inside of you. You get the quit out. Oh, somebody, you've got to give God praise this morning. Get the quit out. Get the quit out. Get the quit out. Get the quit out. Get the quit out in Jesus' name. Get it out. So, so two people says we are well able. They're the minority. They, they, they try and change the conversation, the culture of the day. They are non-conformists. They don't doubt God. They see the same giants. But their perspective is different. They're so big we can't miss. We're not intimidated. We thank God for a big target. Because the greater the obstacle the greater the opportunity, the greater the darkness, the greater the light, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Say amen in Jesus' name. But, second but, the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw... The giants, the descendants of Anak came from the giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in theirs. You know, sometimes you watch people and, and they just don't know how to lose. Before Nadal quit or he could not play in the semifinals, I don't know how many of you watched the quarterfinals, but that match is a life's lesson of a man that tore muscles wherever in his stomach between his ribs and he had to adjust everything he should have quit but he didn't he decided i'm staying in the game and i'm not losing this game even though he adapted and that's what we have to do in business in ministry we don't say it's not working we adapt or we die so what did he do he just kept on playing until he won because he doesn't know how to lose. I'll tell you something this morning that winning is a culture. When you win, it becomes a culture. Amen. When you lose, it becomes a culture. And for people that quit, it becomes a pattern. The moment they don't like it, the moment it doesn't seem right, the moment they don't feel God, they would rather quit and lie down. And if you lie down, my brother, there's no reward. When the winds of adversity blow and Jesus said they will come, in John chapter 16, you have to lower your head and push into the winds of adversity. When the resistance shows up, you have to become more resilient and more determined. You have to dig into something on the inside, which is called the grace of God when you feel weak. 
then you are strong. When you feel you cannot, God says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. When it seems impossible, God says the things that are impossible with men are possible with God. For with God all things are possible. Come on! In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm trying my best to get somebody to change their mind this morning about your journey and your future. Because your decisions today determine your destiny tomorrow. If there's no resistance, you're in the wrong place. If there's no opposition. If there's no giant to slay, there's no grapes to pluck. So in South Africa, we have many giants. And, and, and it's like the Holy Spirit spoke to me this week. We have to stop talking about this in a negative way. These giants are real. But we are going to slay these giants. Amen. We are, I can only put my hand this high. Okay, that's my praise. Week after week is going to go higher. Okay, as I rehabilitate. But that's as high as I can praise right now. Okay. So uh, this one is okay. This one goes there. So uh, I'm like a T-Rex praiser right now. Hallelujah. But at least I'm praising. My hand's not in my pocket. Oh, come on. Give the Lord a praise. Stand to your feet and give Him a praise today. Come on. So what stops them? Ten people come. Listen, power of conversation. Conversations. The congregation was neutral. The congregation had leaders that they had to listen to. And those 10, 12 leaders came back. And 10 leaders who decided to quit before the journey influenced a whole generation to camp in the wilderness, in God's second best. Two people who were climbers, who had a different attitude and a different spirit, they climbed. And 45 years later, they possessed the land that God had for them because no delay is God's denial. And no detour implies God's denial. When God gives you a promise, that settles it because the promises of God in Christ are yea and amen. But you have to make up your mind at the start of this journey. No matter how painful, and there will be pain. Emotional pain, physical pain, relational pain. You'll go through betrayal. You'll go through disappointment. You'll go through everything that you possibly can think. But you have to make the decision that I will not quit. No matter who says what I I'm going into my promised land in the name of Jesus. Say amen in Jesus' name. So rather than possessing the promised land, they're talking about the past. Can we stop blaming apartheid? Ach nie man, ach tu. Say amen in situ then. Thirty years from now, we're still going to blame Jan van Riebeek. Because we've done it for 30 years. And I don't say that apartheid wasn't an oppressive system that favored white people and discriminated against black people. But it's been gone now for 28 years, and I know that the playing fields are not, are, are not right. But, you know, politicians are very devious, and the world is very devious. They want us to focus on the issues which are not the issues of the day. They want us to fight race and they want us to fight sexism male against female and black against white that's not the battle we are all created equal in the image of god we have to begin to celebrate diversity and celebrate who god made us to be and we have to give space to everybody and no matter if the person is black or white we have to put out a hand to lift that person to a better place in the name of jesus that's how we are going to build a better South Africa in Jesus' name. It's got nothing to do with skin pigmentation. That's the way of political leaders in the world to divide us and to get us busy with things that don't matter while they pass laws that enriches them. 
So uh, we are going to release a statement in the near future. I just have to say this. We've asked for an engagement with the government. We're not finished because the lockdown is over. Now we've approached the president's office this last week asking for a meeting and holding them to account for this um, service delivery that is not changing. We will hold them accountable because we have to. Gender-based violence, crime, poverty that's not going down, etc., etc. We demand that our government will fulfill their responsibility in Jesus' name. We are not just fighting for the safe opening of our churches. We are fighting for the future of our people. And that means we are going to challenge our politicians to rebuild those clinics that are destroyed all over South Africa, to stop the corruption, to respond to the Zonda report, and to be held accountable for the money that's disappeared, okay? So we're not yet to be popular. We have to change. And if, there's gonna, if things are going to change, there has to be conflict. So the very thing they tried to shut down, they weren't able. And that's the church. And we're not just going to sit here on a Sunday and glow. We have a responsibility to eradicate poverty from South Africa. Can I have an amen in Jesus' name? So I wonder how many people, just like Israel, quit just before they break through. How many people miss divine appointments? Because they choose to camp. Made a, big, uh, made a bit of money. Now you're just camping. And you don't know that you're going to lose yourself. So three kinds of people, as I said in life. You have campers. You have quitters. And you have climbers. You have people that quit just when they see the size of the mountain. They don't have a stomach for battle. Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. There's no easy. People want life, but they want easy. There's no easy. The easy is following Jesus Christ. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. That is, it's not a religious rule book that will burn you out. But when you follow Jesus, go talk to Paul. Go give me a Pentecostal break. If anybody went through a lot of things, it's the Apostle Paul. To follow the call of God, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. It, it was a, a life filled with challenges. Go read. A life filled with questioning. Where he goes before God and God says, My grace is sufficient for you. God, I don't understand. All I'm doing is I'm following you. And, and all the hell breaks loose. And God doesn't even answer him. God says, My grace is sufficient for you. Because when you are weak, then you are strong. You will learn through the adversities in life to lean upon the grace of God. Not lean upon your ability, your charisma, your strength. When you run out of all of that, you have to learn to lean on something much greater. And that is the grace of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. That is where you remain a climber. Because you are climbing with a helper, with a strengthener in Jesus' name. And you will never be happy until you summit the mountain. Can I have an amen? So the obvious question is, why do people quit? Why do some people choose to camp on fire today and now they camp in front of their television with a cup of coffee? Oops. Not good for our TV followers. So quitters are those who see the mountain. They look into the future they see the obstacles, the giants, and they're overwhelmed before they take one step. So even before the journey begins, they quit. It's like people, and some people legitimately leave South Africa. Uh, let me rather rephrase that. Few people legitimately leave South Africa for better, for greener pastures else, elsewhere. But the Bible is very clear. God has predetermined the boundaries of every generation. So God chose where you would be born. God chose what? culture you would be born into god chose what nation you would be born into so you are not in south africa by accident you are there by god's design in jesus name so these are people who face listen life's adversities and they opt out cop out back out and drop out 
You're not a drop outer. You're not a cop outer. You don't back out. When the challenges come, you step up in Jesus' name. They see the mountain and they abandon the climb. They abandon their dream. And they take the easy path. The path of least resistance. Quitters use languages filled with limitation. Words like, I can't. I won't. It's overwhelming. It's impossible. It's not fair. Taught my children when they were born, life is not fair. Get over it. I'm not going to explain it to you. Get on with it. Get up from it. And just get busy with your destiny in Jesus' name. You stay in the game long enough, you will end up the winner. You will end up the head and not the tail. You will be above and not beneath in the name of Jesus Christ. Words like that will not work. Words like, I'm too young. I'm the only one. I'm alone. I'm too skinny. I'm too tall. I'm too black. I'm too white. If I was a woman, if I was a man, it's a man's world. No. White males are now number eight on the employment list out there in the world. So it's not a man's world. If you're going to find a reason to quit, you're going to find many reasons. Campers are those who see the mountain. They start the climb and then somewhere they settle. They find a reason. People that, that were involved in church pre-COVID and they just couldn't serve God enough and suddenly in COVID, this thing called comfort got a hold of them and now they just want to camp, camp, camp their way in serving God. No, my brother, no, my brother, no, my sister, no, my sister. God called you to be a, cl a, a, a climber. God called you to get back into the house of God, get back into children's church, get back as an usher, get back into the music ministry, get back into the church of God and serve God with all your heart and all your mind in Jesus' name. So there are people that start the climb, but they become weary. They look for a smooth and comfortable plateau on which to camp, to avoid adversity, which can be financial, emotional, relational, because when we climb, the path is filled with much adversity. God would not call us more than conquerors if there were, was nothing to conquer. They focus their energy on filling their tents with material goods, settle into a convenient and comfortable lifestyle. Normally they may have good jobs, pay that just gets the bill paid, their days of excitement, of learning, of growth has passed them by. They just, the same old, same old, happy with life. Um, this year is my 40th year out of school. I know it doesn't look like it, but it's reality. I looked at a photo the other day of 25 people that were in matric with me, and I thought, what's called a like almost as a like a as a But the reality is, if, if, if you don't have vision, you get old. And, and, and the number one thing I say to men, when you quit, it becomes a pattern in life. Laster. When you start something, you finish it. When you start something in failure, before you leave that place of failure, you better turn that failure into success so that you can have a memory. I've slain the lion. I've slain the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine, the bigger giant, will be like one of them. You should have markers. You should have memorials. You should have places where you were thinking of quitting and you didn't. And you manned up to that Goliath. And you defeated that Goliath. And you conquered that Goliath by the power of God, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you have a memory of the victories of God. And that inspires you to climb higher. That's where you get your strength from, from God's grace and God's presence, but also from a good memory. I've not found many motivated men that jump from job to job. I've not found many motivated men that quit. You quit on anything in life. 
you better have a good reason. Because the question would be, why did you start the climb in the first place? What is overwhelming you to stop you from climbing? What is the reason? We know uh, excuses are the crutches of uncommitted people. So everybody wants to uh, summit Mount Everest, but there are very few people who do it. Now there's many more people with modern equipment, etc. Back in the days of Edmund Hillary and his Sherpa, the two of them scaled it together. Um, he wasn't the first man. He was one of the first men that scaled it. But in, a, in one of the attempts before he scaled uh, Mount Everest, he gave a, a commencement address, I think, at Oxford University. And it was a big picture of Mount Everest like this. And Hillary, after addressing the people on, on not quitting, he turned to the mountain and he lifted his fist like this and he said, Mount Everest, you've done all the growing you're going to do, but I'm still growing in Jesus' name. Amen. And that means no matter how many times you have fallen, how, how low you may feel today, it's not the end of the journey in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, those of you on TBN, those of you on Praise TV with us today uh, 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 around the world. I want to say to you that God's promises are yea and amen. God is for you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Come on. Join us on our other social media platforms. Let's climb this mountain that God called us to climb through a relationship with Jesus Christ. I know God's got a great future for you. Embrace it, believe it, and go for it in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Then climbers, which are all of you, say amen, please. Ach nee, man, dit is toch so swak, amen, daar. Oh, come on, give him a praise while I take a break. Listen, every human being has thoughts of quitting. Not a secret, it's a fact. I've had many thoughts to quit. And I didn't. Because when I get in the presence of God, God reminds me. You get in the presence of people, people say to you, yeah, I agree with you, you should quit. But when you get in the presence of God, God reminds you of what He called you to. So you want to be the top doctor, it's not going to fall in your lap. The fish aren't going to jump in the boat. You want to take your company to the next level, your church, your ministry, you have to reinvent yourself. And we're going to talk about it next week, possibly the curse of comfort. Comfort, the greatest enemy of the Christian. Comfort. When people are comfortable, they've lost their hunger. And when you lose your hunger for progress, you might as well quit. I mean, like these babies. They are learning all the time. Every day they are progressing. You can see it. You watch them. They are created in God's image with God's life. And nobody has to tell them to crawl. They automatically figure it out. Like I had to with my left arm do certain things. You figure it out. You face a challenge, figure it out. You've got God on the inside of you. But you've got to get the quit out of you. You've got to get the victim mindset out of you. You've got to get all the other voices out of you that justifies you throwing in the towel. And when life knocks you down, get back up again. When your brothers betray you, you walk through that betrayal. You don't quit. I said you don't quit. I'll say it a million times. Because it has to register in your mind when you face uncertainties. Changing a course is not quitting. Changing a path is not quitting. In other words, you do business like this, it's not working and you have to change a little bit. That book that was years, uh, uh, out years ago, Who Moved My Cheese? Staying relevant in the marketplace. Current. Not sitting on your, resting on your laurels. And just accepting everything is going to be okay. No, you have to study the latest trends, the, the greatest ways. And you have to be the innovator in your field. You have to be the better one in your field. You have to go on courses. You have to study. You have to enlarge yourself. You have to be the better person 
You have to learn so other people can learn from you. Say amen in Jesus' name. So climbers, see the mountain and they grab their gear. Let's get ready. We don't know what it's going to take, but we're going to climb this thing. We're ready. Regardless of their background, listen. Their education, disadvantages, misfortune. These people continue to climb, to ascend. They refuse to allow age, gender, race, culture, physical or mental disability or any kind of obstacle to get in their way. To climbers, the campground for others is their base camp. Like I often say, a one man's ceiling is another man's floor. It's where the other person begins because he has a vision. He has assurance because he has a made up mind. Climbers use language like, let's do it. Let's do it better than anybody else because we can. Ah. Let's make it happen. I can. I'm well able. They speak of possibility. They are problem solvers, come on. They see the opportunity in every obstacle. They turn their stumbling blocks into stepping stones in Jesus' name, come on. When the going gets tough, they are the tough that get going in Jesus' name because they've made up their mind. Like Caleb, 85 years. As my strength was then, so now my strength is for war. Give me my mountain, come on. If you're a climber this morning, and you make up your mind today that you are not going to quit and you are going to embrace your dream and the vision that God has for you. Give Him a praise like there is no quit in you in Jesus' name. Come on, give Him a praise, 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 praise. Come on, give Him a praise. God's going to shift things in people's hearts right now. Give Him a praise, 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 praise. Praise. If God meant it, it's a done deal. If God meant it, that settles it in Jesus' name. Don't negotiate your dream. Don't negotiate the journey. You stay true to the course. You stay true to God. You stay true to yourself. You stay true to the climb. And when you feel like quitting, don't. I said when you feel like quitting, don't. I said, when you feel like quitting, don't. When you feel like quitting, don't. When you feel like quitting, don't. In Jesus' name. You know, when I started in the ministry, uh, after two years, I went to Lady Brand, and many of you know this, Little Church. I moved to Lady Brand. I had a vision uh, to be an evangelist and um, to preach to thousands of people, and God called me to six people. Six. That's where I started. I never even knew there was a place called Lady Brand. Oh. Pastor Selo. Brandyland. Oh. Annie Brandland. Oh. And every morning, because I was struggling with thoughts of quitting. I tell you the truth, I'm not lying to you. I was 22, 23 years old. I thought, what in the world am I doing here? I preached my heart out these 10 people. Then 23. For years. I thought about quitting every day of my life. I thank God I never did. And my mind said, why don't you just go into business? Why don't you just be a tither? Just, this is not worth it. Lady Brown. But then I connected with God and God gave me a vision. And revival broke out in that place. And, and every time that I felt like quitting, I would go into a place and I would pray. I wouldn't talk to people. Because when you feel like quitting, don't talk to people. Because people are going to say, Oh, shame, my brother, I understand. It's difficult. It's hard. <laughs> Let's just weep together. No, if you go through a tragedy, I'll weep with you. But life, life knocks everybody. 
Every human being have challenges. And the greatest challenges are those between our minds. And other people can't find them, fight them for us. So we have to make it out for ourselves. And then you have to go and become resolute in your decision, if it makes sense. You have to adapt an attitude of fortitude, fortress. I shall not be moved. Come hell or high water, you have to become resolute on the inside and stand your ground. And then listen, people will come and try and talk you out of your dream. The minute the quit is over, people will come and say, here's an opportunity. To move you out of God's place. Remember, the palace is not the place where God builds your character. It is the place of suffering. It is the place of loneliness when you wrestle with God, where you will find God and you will find yourself. You will not find God in the palace. You will find Him in the pit. You will find Him in the prison. Then when you get to the palace, your ego will not control you. You will serve the purpose of God. Come on, CRC. Let's climb like never. Come on, South Africa. Let's climb like never. Come on, my brother and my sister. Make up your mind today to be resolute, to be determined, and to be a climber and not a happy camper. I love you. I've got to go to Johannesburg. God bless you. Come on, give him a praise. We're going to sing a song, and then we're going to run around the building. Amen. Come on. Something about the name is like nothing. Nothing I can explain. There's just something. Something about the name Jesus. Jesus.
Let's raise our voice unto the heavens. 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 It's worthy. His name is Jesus. come this morning because of your grace because of your mercy you are the great I am and there is no one like you we honor you the Holy One of Israel because you are the key Lord you were beaten beyond recognition for our sins they mocked you and they hang you. But you have never given up on us. Lord, you have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. This morning, while the believers are praying, you know as you have come this morning, you know spiritually where you're standing with God. You know that when you trust with your own ability, with your own strength, and God is not part of the equation. Your abilities and your skills can only take you to a certain level. But you see when God becomes everything in your life and the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Holy One of Israel, when He becomes part of the journey, you will see increase, you will see multiplication. You will see the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Right now here in Pretoria, while the believers are praying, you say, Pastor, I have come but I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Maybe you've been in the camping zone, I don't know. Maybe you're in the quitting zone, I don't know. But what I can tell you is that when, when God is part of you and you let him, he will lead you, he will guide you, he will show you certain things that nobody else can. So this morning, you used to pray. You used to be a worshiper because you see what you've got in your heart, it will manifest in the natural. But this morning, you are standing here in the church. And you say, Muruti, you know what? I used to serve God on a whole nother level. God used to be everything in my life, but I think I've abandoned the call. God is calling each and every one of you. You want to run back to Him, He's calling you. Don't quit on God this morning. Don't quit on what God wants to do in your life. Because you see, it's at that state when, when you allow Him to become your Lord and your Savior. That the Holy Spirit can, can remove the veil. That the Holy Spirit can lead you. Some of us, God will not say anything up until you give him your heart. Some of us, God will not reveal anything to us. Up until he becomes the Lord and the Master in our life. So this morning, before we go any further with the service, we say, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to come back to, where, to what I used to be. I want to be... I want to call Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior right now in Pretoria. If it's you, you fall in one of those categories. I want you to lift up your hands right now, immediately. Say, I'm coming back home. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on. Raise your hands. Say, I'm coming back home. I'm not quitting on my, on my God. I'm not quitting on the call of, of, of God upon my life. I'm not quitting on my family. I'm not quitting what God wants to do in my life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. So family, this is what we're going to do right now. Whether you've raised your hand or you did not raise your hand, but you know you have to be here at the altar. You have to give your life to the Lord. You have to come back to Him, rededicate your life back unto Him. I want to take you, I want you to take everything that you brought to church your back, whatever belongs to you, and come and meet the leaders and the pastors here at the altar. Come on family, let's encourage them. In Jesus' mighty name. So I open up my heart to you. Come on, let's clap our hands as we encourage them. In Jesus' mighty name. Don't leave this place the same way you came in. Don't leave this place the same way you came in. I'm yours forever. Come on, let's clap, let's clap, let's clap, let's clap.
just live a little bit longer, a little bit longer as people are coming. So I open up my heart God is calling you this morning. God is calling you to himself, yourself, you to himself. Don't give up on your dream. Don't give up on yourself. Only God can change you. Only the Holy One can change you. This is the time to say, God, I'm coming back home. So I open up my heart to you and fully Amen and amen. Family, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Just pray it loud. Repeat after me. I'm going to ask the entire congregation, please can you stretch forth your hands and we help them as they pray, as they give their life to the Lord. Say the following. Say, Father, I believe with all my heart that you've died for me on the cross. This morning, I give you my heart I give you my soul. From today, I declare that you are my Lord and my Savior. From this day, every moment that I will take, I will take it for you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. This is why we do church. In Jesus' name, amen. Family, I'm going to ask all of you, please, Turn to your left and follow Pastor Elzan. They will pray with you and they'll bring you right back into the service, into the service again. The heavens are rejoicing. The heavens are rejoicing. The heavens are rejoicing. Amen and amen. Family, let's take our seat for the offering this morning. This is not the only reasons why we give, why we bring all our tithe to the church. This is some of it. When we give to the church, to the offering, it means the following. It means our giving is a reflection of our heart towards God. Our giving is a reflection of our heart towards God. Giving is an act of worship. So as we prepare every morning when you come to church and you give your offering or you give your tithe, is an act of worship. We give to advance the kingdom of God. And our giving is an evidence, an act of obedience to God. And when we give oneself open himself or herself to the greatness in this life that we are living. In other words, when you want to be great in this planet earth, you have to prioritize your giving. Because the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 9, it says, Honor the Lord with all your wealth and with all the fruits of your, of your crops or your income. Proverbs 18, 16, it says, A man's gift given in love, in love makes room for him and it will bring him before great men. So God himself, he gave us the best. He didn't hold back. So this morning I'm going to encourage each and every one of us. Don't hold back when we give in our, in our offering, in our tithes. Because we gave, God gave us the best. So we also have to give him the best. As an act of worship. As an act of worship. Prepare your offering and your tithes. The ushers, please, can you rise as we listen to a very unwanted item. I'm calling. 
calling on the God of Jacob Whose love endures through generations I know that you will keep your covenant I'm calling on the God of Moses The one who opened up the oceans I need you now to do the same thing For me For me, for me Oh God, my God, I need you Oh God, my God, I need you now How I need you now Oh rock, oh rock of ages I'm standing on your faithfulness On your faithfulness Yeah Calling on the God of Mary Whose favor rests upon the lowly I know with you all things are possible I'm calling on the God of David Who made a shepherd boy Face Goliath, but I've got my own giants. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now, yeah. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your Never changes, never changes. You heard your children then, you hear your children now. You are the same God, you are the same God. You answered press back then, and you will answer now. You are the same God. You are the same God You were providing then You are providing Oh, yes, yes, yes. You are the same God You are the same God You moved in power then God moved in power now You are the same God You are the same God Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for what you have done for us as a church, what you are still doing and what you're still going to do in the future. We honor you and we love you so much. In Jesus' mighty name and all God's people say, Amen, amen and Amen. Family can...